and we are back welcome 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 guys welcome to good energy smash the comment button smash the like button let's get right into it we head to Gajara, mexico where we have a very very big upset huge upset the number one seed emirata kanyu upset by the world's ranked 610th person on tour daria seville this was news, news, news. The longest WTA match so far this season, just under four hours. Emirata Kanyu is bounced. I am very, very concerned, guys. Very concerned. Emirata Kanyu has not looked good the last six months. She has looked completely abhorrent. She has looked horrible tonight. With retiring from the match due to injury, and I don't know what is going on with her there's been several headlines from her uh, changing of trainers to coaches uh, having to get used to the rigorous traveling schedule listen she is one of the top teenagers on tour supposedly uh, she did win the u.s open that's where we know her claim to fame but i have followed her career before the u.s open and sometimes I wish she was back on the ITF playing these lower level tournaments where it seems she's comfortable. Something is not right in her camp. Something is horribly wrong, okay? Emirata Kanyu seems uninterested. She seems like she does not want to play. I've had several excuses from fans of Emirata Kanyu tonight. I've heard anything from she's young, she's only 19. Uh, she's not used to playing in elevation. She's injured. Listen, guys, her team has been there for a week. She's been practicing and training. The elevation should not have been a problem tonight, okay? Once you get off the plane and adjust, two to three days, the elevation's not a problem, okay? This is a little different from professional sports teams where they fly into the higher elevation areas and they have a game the next night okay then they get on the plane and leave then the elevation can bother you a bit but once you've been there and had time to adjust to the elevation the elevation is normally not a problem okay emirata kanyu looks horrible i'm looking at the film from her lower level tournaments in 2021 and her major in the u.s open i'm looking at the film and a lot of things seem different to me her serve is off okay her footwork is off her enthusiasm her passion to win and want to be there all of these things are off she seems uninterested and i've had a lot of comments lately on sophia kennan when these players finally reach your dream and listen guys I'm not sure if you're familiar with Kobe Bryant, but Kobe Bryant had a very, very great quote that he said. He said, it's not about your dream, okay? It's not about achieving the dream. It's about the journey, getting to the dream, okay? The only thing you remember is the journey, the long nights in the gym practicing, the hard work training, the blood, the sweat, the tears. When you achieve your dream, immediately, you're thinking of the next dream, okay? You have very little time to enjoy that dream. It all comes down to the hard work. Sophia Kennan is struggling. She's going through a tough time. And the reality here is when you get these multi-million dollar checks, it's tough to then have to get up. It's the Monday morning hangover to have to go back to work and play for a $6,000 game check. It's very, very difficult tough and you're seeing who the true champions are okay serena williams bow down to the queen serena williams over 70 titles 23 grand slams multiple multiple double grand slams gold medals okay we're seeing who the true champions are serena williams you need to bow down to the queen i'm sorry guys but when we look at these one hit major winners and then they can't come back and get up for the game they supposedly love, then I have a problem with that. OK, 
okay? Emma Ranikanyu was taken out by the world's 610th player. And you know, I don't want to make this about Emma Ranikanyu's injury. We hope and we wish that she gets well soon. We hope that she's back for the Indian Wells. I, I will be in Miami. I would love to see Emma Ranikanyu in Miami. She's a great player. I've watched her matches on the lower level circuits and she seemed more comfortable. It seems like she's not a big crowd type of person. She seems quiet. However, I think she's very great when speaking to the media. Uh, she has great poise, great confidence, her words, great people skills. She's a great speaker. She seems like a natural fit for the for the spotlight and the starlight. However, just watching her play in these larger crowds and arenas, it seems like she's uncomfortable. You know, I think she was just in the zone at the U.S. Open. Now, I watched her matches at the U.S. Open and just the quality of competition that she ran through. First of all, her footwork was a lot better. Okay, she's a much she's a hardcore player, but her footwork was amazing during the U.S. Open. Her serve was amazing. Her serve and volley, her defense was amazing. I don't see any of that. You know, it's like it's like she's completely changing her game and she's uninterested. I don't see the enthusiasm, the passion. I don't see none of that to win. But nonetheless, let's take a look at the person that deserves all the credit today. Okay, Daria, ranked 610th in the world. Now, we've seen her reach a, a career high, ranked 20th in August of 2017. She does have one singles title under her belt. She's made a ton of money on tour. Um, just above a 500 level player. 267 wins on her career, 212 losses. Uh, in terms of the Grand Slam, her best appearance has been the Australian Open. She's made the round of 16 twice, in 16 and 17. Of course, 17 being her best year on tour. She's made the Roland Garros round of 32 in 2018. She made Wimbledon 2018, the round of 32. And the best she's done at the US Open was making it to the round of 64 and 17 and 18. These two ladies have never played each other, um, but this is a match you would you would have to expect Emma Raducanu to win. Uh, Daria recently lost to Asia Muhammad. You know, I would definitely uh, put Asia in terms of her game. Now it's tough to compare games and styles, okay? Because each player has a different style. But I would definitely put Asia Muhammad below Emma Raducanu in terms of just style. I mean, Asia is ranked 200 on tour. Uh, she's a good doubles player. Rebecca Peterson, uh, you know, another player she lost to. I would, if Rebecca Peterson played in Murata County right now, I'd probably take Rebecca Peterson. I say all the time, Rebecca Peterson's a type of, she's the type of woman where she can definitely get out of the first and second round, uh, possibly make it deep into the third round in, the, in these lower level tournaments. In the majors, Rebecca Peterson is going to definitely make it out of the first round. Okay, She's a very, very favorable player to make it out of the first round in the majors. And she's a sleeper pick. But, I mean, some other losses, you know, that Daria has had recently. And it's like, Emma Raducanu, this is a match she had to win. The first set, for anyone that saw the match, the first set, uh, Emma did pull out 7-5. Um, but nonetheless, the second set, very, very disappointing. Uh, I went to a tie break. Emma had several chances where she essentially could have closed it out and she just couldn't. Well before the injury, this was a 50-50 match. I just feel Daria, she wanted it more tonight. And I mean, Daria was faced with the same elevation Emma Raducanu was. So we're not making excuses for Emma Raducanu tonight. I think Daria was the, the better person. And being that this match was essentially just under four hours, she showed heart, gut, and determination. And a lot of these professional athletes, they get injured, they play hurt, and they give their all. Look at Serena Williams and all the majors and titles she has. You mean to tell me she wasn't injured in a lot of those tournaments? But nonetheless, if you look at the match summary here, Emma Raducanu did pull off seven aces, 
uh, double faults Daria she gave away a few points first serve percentage Emma rent Emma one 61% first serve points one Emma one as well second serve points one Daria made her pay uh, total points as you can see this this was a 50 50 match and, you know it's not like Emma Raducanu was blowing Daria out of the water this was a 50 50 match and as I said six out of 21 on break points she had 21 break points so it's not like Emma played a great game so in my opinion I think Daria would have won either way and I'm not saying that Emma Raducanu's injury was not real but I watched I've been watching tennis for a long time okay the ladies they fake injuries I'm 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 sorry to break this to you guys but when you are a top seed and, and you are simply getting embarrassed by someone that's not ranked or you're losing a match you feel you should not be losing and you're not all there for whatever reason the ladies do call the physio on purpose it happens and I'm sorry to break that to anyone that's not aware okay this particular match I I saw a little bit of acting okay you don't get up and walk to the 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 back room if you're that injured if you're really that injured you're going to get treatment right where you are on the bench lie down get treatment you don't then go back into the back room i just i felt it could have possibly been an icing technique if you guys watched my king richard video you saw when venus williams was 14 years old playing the top player in the nation she had the win and she got iced and she completely came back and lost when emma came back and daria was still there she was not going anywhere she had to concede and i'm sorry guys this emma ranikanyu rant it's long overdue she's had a horrible six months and when are we going to see the true emma ranikanyu that we thought we were getting the Emma at Wimbledon, the Emma at the New York Open, okay, the U.S. Open. What's going on here? I don't know, but you know what? We have a ton of tennis to talk tonight. Emma Raducanu is out. However, this is a, a tournament that I'm going to predict a winner and a future winner, and let's see who's left. So the number one seed, Emma Raducanu, is out. The number two seed, Madison Keys, out. The defending champion, Sorbos Termo, what can she do? Um, she's, she's got a great chance to make it back to the finals here. Osorio, she is in. Perez Diaz, she is still here. Sloan Stevens is remaining. Sloan Stevens had a very, very entertaining match with the 14 year old kid phenom and for those of you that are not aware uh some a lot of people uh <laughs> it's kind of funny to me but a lot of people thought sloan stevens would lose this matchup i mean we're looking at the next kid phenom brenda fruitova she's from the czech republic and she's on the tear ladies and gentlemen uh she essentially won um i mean she won two ITF tournaments so far. She won the uh, Argentina tournament, ITF 25,000, and she won uh, the Tukman 2, another Argentina tournament, and again, another 25,000 uh, tournament there. And she's winning a lot of matches this year. Uh, she's essentially on a 12-1 a, a and one, uh, streak this year before she ran into Sloan Stevens. A lot of people were picking Sloan Stevens to lose this match, but the reality here is we're talking about a former Grand Slam champion. We're talking about one of the most athletic players on tour. Yes, Sloan Stevens has had her issues, but the reality here is you can't deny her backhand. Her backhand is one of the best backhands in the business. And as long as she's focused, I feel that I feel mentally you're gonna see a different Sloan Stevens this year. She's married now, so it's not a lot of you know you see a lot of these women on tour and you can tell when they're having the boyfriend issues and they're going through a lot of things you know like danielle collins with that meltdown at the at the french open uh, a couple years ago playing sophia kennan 
that was a complete meltdown with your boyfriend. And when you get a lot of these women that are married, they don't have those extra issues. They can focus on their game and their craft. And look, I gave the pick out. Sloan Stevens was going to take this kid to school. She's 14 years old. Um, I mean, she's playing well, but you can see... Uh, and I say this a lot when let's take a look at the professionals in basketball when you have the prof professionals in basketball um, compared to the college kids so take the top college kids coming into the, the National Basketball Association the top college kids are very good in college they're a level above the average college kids but when you put them in the league with the professionals a lot of times <laughs> there is a big big level of competition difference the professionals are much better you're talking men against boys okay this is a matchup here with Sloan Stevens where it's just a woman against a little girl she had nothing for her Sloan Stevens won this match uh, under 17 games very quick match and Sloan Stevens is, was just taking her to school uh, but nonetheless watch out uh, I do think that um, uh, Brenda will have a good career and I think within the next couple of years she could be as big as a Corey Golf. She's winning a lot of matches against grown women but Sloan Stevens is just way too much. Um, but I mean yeah she's you know 13 and 13 and 2 now in the year. Um, great 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 player. I think she's going to be good in the future. If you can get Sloan Stevens to win this tournament with the future take it right now. Uh, the the level of competition that's left, Sloan looks really, really good. Um, you got to keep in mind, as I said, um, not only is Sloan experience, but she doesn't have the distractions that I see right now in her life. But Brenda Futova, very, very good, very hot. She's playing well. The way Sloan dismantled her, I like Sloan to win this tournament. And what about Marie Buskova? Coming back from the world's, uh, in terms of Japan, Dwai is now the top Japanese player. Osaka is ranked below her. Osaka is just not active. She's not playing tournaments. Uh, she will be back for the Indian Wells. But again, once you start making these millions of dollars and you get all these sponsors, it's tough for these ladies to come back on tour and play $6,000 matches. You know, and Osaka, I know Osaka wanted time off to mentally get her things together. But um, she's got to play matches. Come on now. Uh, but Buskova, uh, I love her headbands. She has the best uh, headbands. Um, but nonetheless, uh, she's back. And Buskova got the win. She came back. And I do like Buskova to win today as well. So look out for that matchup there. But Sloan Stevens versus uh, Parquet. Uh, I like Sloan Stevens to advance to the quarterfinals. And then uh, Saville versus Dohide. That's actually going to be a pretty good match, to be honest with you. Uh, Saville, uh, she is essentially, if you take a look at her prime, 2017, 2018, uh, she's definitely the more experienced player. But Saville has been playing pretty darn good lately. And, um, you know, Dolhide Do Do has been playing good too. She beat Zoo, and Dolhide has been hot lately on the, on the ITF. So Dohad's, def Dohad's definitely the more active player of the two. Uh, she's had, in terms of this year and the last uh, couple months to end 2021, Dohide has been playing pretty good tennis, and she's very fit and she's strong. That's a match I like. I mean, Savo may be a little tired. Uh, she hasn't been that active after playing a four-hour match with a tough Emirata Kanyu. Uh, that's a match there that I'd probably take. Um, I'd probably like Dolhide to win the first set. But nonetheless, um, again, Emirati Kanyu, I'm a big fan. I hope she comes back. If I was a little too harsh on her earlier, listen, there's a lot of Emirati Kanyu fans. Trust me, I get the messages all the time. Look, not being hard on her, just being a professional. Uh, I hope she comes back and I hope she does well. But nonetheless, I do like Sloan to win it. I'm not going to waste any more time in Mexico. But watch out for Wang and also watch out for Bronzetti. Those two players have been playing really, really good. But Sloan's my pick to win it. And um, Sherbridge Turmel, you have to like Turmel to repeat as well. But nonetheless, I would take Sloan to win this tournament. I think she can beat any of the ladies that's remaining. Listen, let's go to Qatar. Uh, the Qatar Open 
let's focus on some heavy hitters. Yeah, we got some great matches uh, taking place today at the Qatar Open. And out of the top 10 players, we have nine remaining. You know what that means? That means we have some great tennis coming up. Uh, Lena Svetlana, as I stated, she's, I can imagine she's going through a lot. Her mind, I don't think, is on tennis right now. She's lost several easy matches this year that she should have won. Um, so best wishes to Elena Svetlana. Hopefully she will be back in full swing. I, I can't wait to see her at the Indian Wells in Miami. We'll, we will be in Miami, so that's going to be a great, great tournament. But nonetheless, uh, nine of the top ten players remaining, and we have some great matches that are coming up. I'm definitely looking forward to Pagola Sacri. That's going to be a very, very great match. Uh, Conteve versus Elise Mertens. Coco Golf versus Paula Bedosa. That I have my I'm gonna have my popcorn bright and early. That match starts in, in a few hours. Paula Bedosa versus Coco Golf. That's gonna be amazing. Uh, Coco Golf. I mean Paula Bedosa just took out Clara Tawson. And you know what? Let's 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 get right into that matchup. Paula Bedosa versus Clara Tawson. Tawson one of Five teenagers, teenagers on tour that are just completely wreaking havoc. Uh, Corey Golf, another one uh, that Paula Bedosa is going to have to face in the next round. But nonetheless, the matchmakers are doing a great job. They want to see how well Paula Bedosa can perform against these youthful players that are just so good. But Clara Tawson, very, very strong serve. Very, very strong forehand. And she's just played someone that just has better athletic ability and can match her power and that just put her in a world of world of horror and terror and nonetheless Clara Tawson she beat Belinda Bensick which was a great win uh, and th it did go three sets but Clara Tawson won the first set 6-4 she dropped the second set 6-3 but essentially won the third set 6-3 against Belinda Bensick serving first in the third set she broke her once that's all she needed to put her away and the reality here is Clara Tawson very very strong but like I said uh, when she is on the court for a long time, you start to see her gas. And this is a match where Paula Bedosa, again, like I said, she can match her strength. She can match her uh, serve. And she can just outperform her athletically, much better footwork. And the bigger, stronger woman, uh, more experienced, Paula Bedosa, she made light work of Clara Tawson. And Clara Tawson, uh, can't wait to see her at the Indian Wells in Miami. Definitely a growing star on tour. And Paula Bedosa, great, great warm-up here. She's going to have a tough, tough test against Coco Golf. I am so looking forward to that matchup. Like I said, I'm going to have my popcorn bright and early watching that matchup. Ooh. To be honest with you, that's a match that it would just do no justice to predict it. To be honest with you, I would probably have to take the over on that matchup. Unbelievable. I can't wait for it. But if we take a look at Coco Golf's way and her journey to the round of 16, the first round she faced Shelby Rogers, a uh, fellow country woman, uh, defeated her in straight sets 6 2, 6 3. And then the next match against Caroline Garcia, the French woman, Bonjour Comotelli Vu, not, not, not good for Caroline Garcia. 6 2, Golf won the first set. The, the second set went to a tie break. 7-3 golf won that. Caroline Garcia is very experienced. Okay, she has a she has several titles. She has a lot of wins, and she's pretty much seen it all. The fact that Coco Golf ran through her in straight sets just makes me anticipate this matchup even more. Golf has had more uh, court time in this tournament. She's played two tough opponents. This is a match that Corey Golf can win. She can beat Paula Bedosa. Uh, don't think for any chance of the imagination that Coco Golf cannot beat Paula Bedosa. Uh, one thing that, in terms of a matchup between the two, uh, Golf is definitely going to have the better movement, uh, horizontal and vertical. Uh, in terms of serves, uh, I. That's that's a tough one. I 
I mean, Golf has been working a lot on her serve lately, but I probably give the slide as to Paula Badosa, just being the taller, more stronger physical person. Uh, these two did play last year at the Indian Wells where Paula Badosa won in straight sets, but I have a feeling this could be a revenge game, and I would definitely like the over in this matchup. I would take the over, over 21 games. And what about Jelena Ostapenko taking on Amanda Anasmova? And this is a matchup again I was watching. I did have Jelena Ostapenko winning this matchup, but nonetheless, I had my popcorn because Amanda Anasmova is definitely one of the future stars on the rise. Please, please watch out for her. She is going to be a problem on tour, with, and I predict probably the next couple years, she is going to be causing havoc, giving headaches to everyone. Uh, but nonetheless, Jelena Asapenko is playing very, very well uh, this month in particular. Uh, but she made it out of the first set against uh, Ocean Dodden. And Dodden's always a tough opponent. Uh, but straight set, 6-4, 6-2. And this match with Amanda Anasmova, Amanda was just frustrated. Amanda Anasmova reminds me of Jennifer Brady. She's got the good serve and volley. She's got the good one-two punch. And she is very strong for her slender frame. But yes, Amanda Anasmova is Jennifer Brady 2.0 in my opinion. Hopefully Jennifer Brady will be fully healed and ready to come back because Jennifer Brady is someone you don't want to forget about. She's very strong. But Amanda and Jennifer, uh, good practice buddies. They really have very similar, similar game. But Amanda Anasmova, we saw her uh, take out Haddad Mia, which is a tough match, but she won in straight sets, 7-5, seven, 7-4. Seven, this match here, she was very frustrated though. And again, I felt Ostapango. Ostapango is finally looking fit. She's playing herself with these long matches into form. Ostapango is gonna be a problem this year. I look for Ostapango to do very well at the French Open and Wimbledon. Those are the two majors that I'm looking for her to go deep into. And keep in mind, Indian Wells, she's going to be a problem. Miami, she's going to be a problem because Ostapenko is in shape and she is by far stronger than a lot of these players on tour. Uh, it does go three sets though, but Ostapenko gets the best of Anna, Amanda Anasmola and I felt again her passion, her enthusiasm just simply intimidated the young player down the stretch. The next matchup I want to talk about is Marie Sackby versus Jessica Pagula. Now these two ladies, uh, they just played at the Australian Open where Pagula got the best of Sackby. And the reality here is Pagula is the underdog. And I think it's a really good spot to be honest with you. Uh, both ladies are healthy. Nothing has really changed since they've last played. Uh, Sackby did have a deep run into the... Um, to the uh, St. Petersburg Finals with um, with the Nat Conteve. So, um, I mean, she's had a little bit more court time, but taking a look so far here at the Qatar Open, Pagula first round beating Sinekova. That's a matchup I gave out. Uh, then Pagula beating um, Carol Juvan, again, another young top player. Uh, so Pagula getting some pretty decent wins there, and Sackley having the bye beating uh, An Lee 6-3, 6-3 after Lee beat uh, Sophia Kennan. Uh, I think Jessica Pagula, in terms of this tournament, is a little bit more battle-tested. This is a match where I have to probably, uh, I like the over, but I probably take Pagula to get off to a fast start in the first set. Muguruza, the WTA 2021 uh, finalist and champion. You have to like Muguruza against Springo. This is a match that Muguruza you know, once she gets her rhythm and her stride, she's very tough to beat. Uh, early on in the season, she just needs to warm up, although she does do well at the Australian Open, traditionally, um, historically. But nonetheless, Muguruza advances against Brangle. Kasekina versus Suyantag. Kasekina, the uh, the match against Tom Janovic, that, that was a free pick I gave out. Um, that's a match again. She should have won, but nonetheless, a match against Christian. Christian retired. Uh, she was outplaying uh, Kataskina dramatically. Uh, Iga Suyantek, we saw her get the win over Golovic, and that went three sets. She's a little rusty. Now, Iga Suyantek, if you follow the channel, I've mentioned many times she's got to work on her serve. Uh, once the ball's in play, um, 
you know, she's she's a good technical player. She's very sound. She's she's pretty disciplined. She wins seventy. If she wins the she wins seventy five percent of her matches. But if she wins the first set, she most likely will win the match. But um, you know, she's like Osaka though. If you take her into deep water, you take her into three sets, uh, she can fold and she can break. But nonetheless, this is a match where kind of seeing it doesn't look as good as she did early January in the Australian leg of the tour. Uh, Iga Swiatek should win this match, and um, most likely it's probably going to be a straight set victory. Kasatkina did she just did not look good against Tom Janovic or Christian last match. Teichman versus Sabalenka. Uh, Sabalenka getting the bye in the first round. We saw her versus Elise Cornet, the French woman, six two six two straight set victory. That's a very very impressive win for Sabalenka. Uh, because uh, Cornet is a veteran, she has a very, very great ball directing and chains of pace. And Sabalenka, if you want to be here, you have to change of pace. So she did a good job adjusting to that. Teichman, very impressive path here so far, beating uh, Angelique Kerber, the crafty lefty, in straight sets. And she essentially, um, no, I'm sorry, that was a three set victory. I said straight sets. She beat Teichman, beat Kerber in, in three sets. Kerber won the first set, 6 4. Teichman won the second set 6-3, and then Teichman won the third set 6-2. Uh, Van Yutblik, again, that's a match I, I gave out for free for Teichman to win. Very good odds on that one. Uh, Van Yutblik, she's just too inconsistent, you know, and that's straightforward. But the match against uh, Teichman, Sabalenka, Ty if Teichman wants to win, she's going to have to make it a track meet. She's going to have to make Sabalenka move from that baseline all around the court it's as simple as that i don't think teichman has the tools to really um adjust to the power sabalink is going to bring sabalink is looking a lot better too but that's a very good win against elise cornet if you can route elise cornet like that i think you you can definitely hit through uh jill teichman so i like sabalink the two to one favorite to advance there it, it could be a tough three sets but i do see sabalink moving on now besides badosa golf Krajikova Ostapenko is the second most important match that I need to watch today. And Ostapenko is on a tear, taking out Dada in the first round, Amanda Anasmova the second round, and now she faced Krajikova. She just played Krajikova, and again, this is a match here where on paper you, you probably have to go with Krajikova, but. I don't see how you can pick against Asapenko. She's on a win streak. You can only lose once on a win streak. And Barbara Kachikova, she, she doesn't move well uh, vertically. Barbara Kachikova is she's a much better horizontal player. And the reality here is that backhand that Asapenko is going to be delivering. I think it's just going to be too much. And I think Barbara Kachikova is going to just be frozen, you know, like what can you do when when Asapenko is hitting her winners down the line, you normally get a camera shot of opponents 8 to 12 feet away from it and there's just nothing they can do. And I don't see anything Kachikova is going to be able to do. She's going to have to make Asapenko run, but Asapenko is, she's, in, she's fit, she's in shape now, she's playing very well on both sides of the court her defense is transitioning into offense and she's showing you clearly that she can go three sets that's been my biggest problem with Asapenko is bringing her into three sets she runs out of gas but she's not doing that her power is transpiring for the entire match and Krajikova uh, she blew through Magni Lynette which is good 6-1-6-3 uh, this could be a revenge match for Krajikova, but I'd, I'd probably have to take, uh, Krajikova normally starts slow, so I'd probably take Asapenko to win the first set, but this is going to be a great match. Now, if there's someone on tour that has Annette Conte's number, it's Elise Mertens. This is a matchup of the fourth seed versus the 16th seed. I think Annette Conte definitely should have been higher, um, in terms of seeding, she definitely should have should add a better seeding than the fourth seed, but nonetheless, easier path to the finals. Um, but in terms of Elise Mertens, a tough match against Jasmine Proliani. Uh, Jasmine definitely short, fast, athletic. 
she did very well against Kvitova. I felt Kvitova was coming on in the second set, but Kvitova um, just, I felt Kvitova knew that she didn't have a chance to win the match and she didn't even wait for the physio, she bailed. But even though at least Mertens owns the head to head against Annette Contave, she has three wins over her and pretty impressive wins, might I add. I think Annette Contave is going to be at least Mertens here. I think Annette Contave is just playing much better at the time. And, um, you know, a lot of the head to head matchup stuff, you can't really look into that and you can't really, you know, weight that too heavily because a lot of tennis is current form uh fitness and rhythm how are you playing at the moment what's the surface um how have you looked recently and the net contaves just looked much better than at least pretend so i have at least pretends losing this match to contave i have contave advancing uh we'll be back guys we're going to take a look at the um the round of eight and you know, I'll have previews and predictions there, and we'll make our way through the semifinals and the finals. And uh, this is good energy, guys. Again, very disappointed with Emma Raducanu. I'm one of her biggest fans, but she's got to get it together. She's got to get her team together. She has to practice more, and I'm just not pleased with Emma's what she's producing. But we have a great day of tennis coming up, guys. Comment below. Smash the comment button. Smash the like button. Smash the subscribe button. And tell me, who do you think is going to win the uh, Mexico Gajara tournament? Who's going to win the Qatar Open? Give me your feedback. Once again, guys, have a blessed day. We'll be back tomorrow.